Hi, I'm Dr. Sally Foote. In this video from the puppy handling demonstration section from my puppy behavior certification seminar day, you'll see how, how we go about greeting the puppy, greeting the owner, and watch, watch closely for how we use tossing the food to evaluate the puppy's ability uh, to eat the food and their fear level, and how we go along the steps of first picking the puppy up to be safe. Thanks a lot and enjoy. low stress handling puppy examination or the pretend vaccination, right? So um, why don't we do Indy first? Okay. Where's Indy? Hello. Now at my office, the client gets to stay around and be the street administrator. They're the cookie queen or the cookie king, as I would call them. Um, yes. So what's important is uh, for the puppy, when Rachel greets and I greet, this puppy, what do they have to get from us? Treats. Yeah, yeah they got to get some kind of reward because we're the ones who are going to be doing the tough stuff. And it has to be, even though you know Indy's all happy and all about it, I got to. We got to make sure we're maintaining that. So if Rachel's the one who's greeted the reef stacks in here, you know, and and you know is getting the history as she's brought the puppy in. Excuse me. As soon as they've come in, she's going to maybe toss some food on the floor around the table to Indy. So why don't you just do like you normally do, Rachel, and Sam. Oh, it ran away. So we see that Indy's really eating it easily. And now, let's say, so right, let's pretend I just walked in the room. Oh my gosh, I'm so busy, blah, blah, blah. Hi, how's it going with Indy? Are we having any puppy problems at home? He's a puppy. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, let me just ask you this. Is there anything that's driving you crazy right now? Walking on a leash. Walking on a leash. Okay, well, before we go, I've got a couple tips that on a handout for Rachel to give to you to help you with his ability to walk. And the first thing is, it's called Kacha Being Good. So he's going to earn his dinner on the walks. He's going out to dinner every night. And so we'll cover that then. Right now, like, I'm running a little tight on time because we got a hit by a car. It was finally doing better. So I do need to get the exam and the vaccines done. But as I'm doing this checkup, we might talk a little bit about that because we're going to use some of this food to help him learn how to focus on us. And that's part of taking him out to dinner on the walk. Okay, thanks. So can I have a leash? Thank you. Hi, you. How you go? So I reached it down then because he's standing and still so nice in front of me. He's not jumping up on me. This is how in the office my hand is where? In my heart. I would reward him. So we're doing it intermittently, but that's fine. Because we have tech aggression as well as vet aggression. So now because I'm old, Rachel, could you help lift him up on the table? <laughs> <laughs> and let's say he was bigger, right? It would be a two people lift. Let's show a two people lift, because that's important. So a two people lift is, let's go here. So it's both foot. Let's pretend he's already 60 pounds, so it's mm -hmm. me both of us picking him up. Mm -hmm. So you come over here like you normally would, like when we both would lift him up. So with, to make it less stressful on the pet, when we both are needed to pick up the dog, it's important for us to stand side by side. She lures him forward. Maybe we both kneel to get his head up here. I wait until she gets her arm around him and the head. Now I am in the one, two, three. Then we lift together. Now one thing I want you guys to notice, my shoulder and her shoulder are staying together. I'm not like this because that pulls on the back of him and it wrenches his body, which is uncomfortable, and then he learns to struggle. And this is when we get the dog who flips and bites the tech when you're being lifted and put on the table. Okay, so now let's get him over here on the table. Thanks. Okay. Oh, yes. So now we just put him on the table, and for this act, he gets a couple nuggets now. And she and I are gonna do the thing you. She's keeping a collar hold so he doesn't jump off the table. And not only does he, he doesn't really seem to care about jumping off the table because he's already learned the treats are coming up here on the table. We're going to now increase the frequency of the rewards up here because this is the big announcer of horrible stuff happening. I want him to stay up here. I want him to love being up here. Not only love me, love Rachel, but love being up here. Okay, so she's got her pocket loaded. I've got my pocket loaded. And so we're going to start the exam. So as typical, we tend to work on opposite sides of the table, right? 
So as a veterinarian, you're going to flip around your order of the exam. You are not going to start at the head and go to the tail. You will get an exam from the head to the tail, but you will not start there. You're going to start, oh, my stethoscope's over there, but that's okay. Pretend I'm wearing it. You're going to start from the side. And from a side approach, as soon as I'm aiming to standing here, I'm looking at him, I'm looking at her. She's giving him rubs because he seems to enjoy it. And then I say, and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to start the exam now. So as I put the stethoscope on, he's getting rubs, and then I may drop one reward for the action of touching with the stethoscope because that's so that he likes the stethoscope. A friend of mine in Marshall, Illinois, told me this dog is so aggressive, she's not been able to listen to his heart and lungs over just the stethoscope. So you'd think it was a snake that was going to bite him. And maybe, I don't know what, did he get hit with a black rubber hose? I don't know. Maybe he had a really forceful vet exam when he was having the stethoscope on him. So this is how I listened with the stethoscope, you got one nugget. Now then, I'm gonna go ahead and let's get you to stand up. So I'm gonna palpate his abdomen. And Rachel does this, see how she's like cross rewarding? Yeah, palpating his uh, pulse, may look through there, look through his fur. Okay, I used an ear thermometer, a lot less invasive. It is accurate, it's off by one degree, but the calibration is that way. And then I would save rectal temperature only for if they were above normal or below normal, as like the secondary check. Okay, so now for the head exam, because he's in an age, and let's say I've never seen him before, this is his first vet exam with me. Uh, and I'm sorry, you had to drop to him off because you're running late and the kids are at the school. Normally I would have her standing in front doing this, hi, and she'd be rewarding. So she's my free labor for rewarding. But let's say today is the day she can't be here. So this is how we would do it here. Now like Cooper, if I've never met him before, I don't know if he could suddenly flip to bite at this age because we have impulsivity. I'm gonna make it good from the start. I'm gonna have a little bit of that and then I'm gonna flip the air and I'm gonna go away. And then, now I may give, sorry, I'm getting clumsy here. Hi. Now I may give you, eat a little, and I flip the, oops, where'd you have it? There you go. Flip the lip, and now there. So he has all his adult deciduous teeth then, I just saw that, and he's getting it ready to get his canine teeth then. Okay. Now if I wanted to do an actual mouth exam, I would kind of do a little bit of this facial handling and rewarding, because I'm conditioning him to accepting me to really opening the mouth. Please just don't crack the mouth open. Yes, we were taught to do that. But can you see how that A could be startling or be a big bite risk for us? And if once this dog has flipped to bite, and we're like, whoa, we stop mouth exam, he's learned to do that. So I did a little flip the lip. Now I may look in both eyes. Oh, dog, yes. Another bit of hand, head handling. Hi, what did you get? Good. Let's flip the chin. Wonderful. Good dog. And again, another one. So I was elevating the lip, and now I really took a look behind the commissures for the teeth, okay? And then lastly, if I were to open the mouth, just your thumb and your index finger only. On either side, feeling right behind where the upper fourth premolars, gently roll the lip over the teeth. Good boy, good boy, wonderful! And we're gonna get a jackpot at the end. Oh, okay, she's too good. So. <laughs> and then, Either we rotate the dog or we rotate the people. If he was a little scared, like, okay, can we turn him around and say he's, she can tell he's kind of tense, I say, okay, let's change that. <coughs> so then we might actually do this, and I keep a hand on the collar just because he's a puppy and you may jump off, I don't want that to happen. And then I'm gonna do everything like from this side as well. Now when it really comes time for the vaccination, for this, I will have my needle on a 25 gauge needle, we do not need to go any larger. And I'm gonna to say to Rachel, okay, um, like we're gonna get ready to give the shot, so you tell me when he's ready. What's that mean? That's her way of like, she's gonna feed him a handful of food, so you can get started on that. Or, and then I will go ahead and give the pinch and give the injection, and then I turn this way away. Right after injection, I make a mild turn away. So he doesn't associate you with the blood. Got it. I increased the distance from myself away from him right after that pain trigger. That's like, tells the dog, crap happened, oh, but it's gonna go away. I don't need to make it go away. So it helps to reduce the likelihood of that flip to bite, pain triggered aggression. So it's, this is how we, the care administrators, need to learn how we change some of our, you know, habits and our own steps we take while we're also conditioning them or getting them used to this handling and pokes and prods. 
Okay, so now I do want to go over positioning because we had a couple texts here in like oncology and we talked about that. So Rachel, why don't you come over here? So let's pretend um, we need to lay him in lateral recumbency to look at something on his abdomen, a little rash or something like this. So when positioning him, oftentimes it's helpful to, and especially if we're like, we have to be on an x-ray table, right? We can't have anybody assisting us to have what I called a target spot. So when we get him in position, his head's right there to get the reward. Okay, so we're gonna put a little blob. Well, we're gonna have to hold your head up so you don't eat it right away, okay? <laughs> okay, we're gonna put a blob here. Let's pretend that's an x-ray table. I know. All right, now the important thing is that Rachel's gonna reach and she's putting her hand on the inside leg at the elbow. Do not hold the pause. And I've got my hand here above the hock and on the count of three, we talk together. One, two, three. We rotate know, the body. Sweet. Yeah. Know. And then she's going to have to do a quick look, hand flip. Look, look, there you go. Oh, good job. So now he, job. and what are we doing? I am keeping yeah. my chest in contact with his body. No oh, gaposis. That gaposis is where it gives him room to rise up or possibly to struggle oh, against. I'm not holding the pause. I'm around the hot joint. And yes, this is, I, I'm keeping my back kind of straight. You're going to be sticking your butt out. That's what you're going to be doing. Okay, don't feel like this. You're going to be more like this. Rachel's doing the same. And so now we we hold the lower leg here. She's holding that. And so now we may be in position, say, to go ahead and take an x-ray. Or now I'm going to, you know, rotate, sorry, rotate your leg here so I can take a look at your abdomen, take a look at your flank. And then when we're done, we're going to stand up and we can allow him to rise up. And then we may give him another reward right then for staying laying on the table. He didn't have to pop up and jump up. Now the thing that's really tricky is that flip, isn't it? And on some puppies, like you could see, he was a little wary, like, what are you doing with me, folks? This may have been the first time he's ever been flipped over on his side on an exam table. So for our puppy owners, it is good to have them practice some of this positioning and handling at home. Because at home, you might be like, what did you do on your abdomen? I gotta get a look at it. We don't want the dog struggling at home. And then, so we, so technicians advise your, advise your owner to have like a handful of the food. Yeah. <laughs> and, you're so promoted. So, like he's gonna get a hand, start eating a little, and I'm gonna actually pick up your feet and handle them. And then let go of the feet and let go of the food. That's how you do feet handling. If he pulled and struggled away, then we would start up just higher on the leg here. The paws are the most sensitive area. And reward, like that, until we work down to the actual paw. If we're getting this, the dog is over, uh, over threshold. They're saying no, they're withdrawing. So you need to back off until you're at the part of the body where they're not withdrawing. Reward that and then work your way down the leg. The other thing is like to give the puppy like a little hug and then a reward. Because just like you saw in that video with Cooper, there are gonna be times like lifting him, you're gonna to have to be hugged. And if he's never been, you know, hugged, then he's gonna get startled and more likely to flip to aggress. Secondly, whether or not we tell people not to hug dogs, what do people do to a black Labrador, they give him a hug. So if he's at least more conditioned positively to things like a quick hug, I'm not saying they would never aggress, but I'm just saying it makes it less likely. And in some of the um, some of the training classes, the focus on the clicker training and such is for doing the skills and the task, and they're not getting the handling in there. So just like with past the puppy and the little puppies, people would be touching and rewarding. This is how we can do it in the vet exam, and you tell the client. And especially if, say, he was like pulling his leg away, no, nah. okay, he doesn't like his feet handled, but this is exactly how I want you to take dinner and help him learn how to allow his feet to be handled. Because it will help me when he draws blood, clip his nails, he has broken toenail, you know, when you do these things. Yes, okay. And then when we're done, as I'm talking and saying, well, he's really in beautiful shape. His adult canines are just getting ready to be started. And I'm gonna intermittently give him a couple of rewards up here <coughs> just for sitting here. This is a part of that last memory, being lasting memory of good things. And then Rachel, we can take him down now. And if she wants to take him down by herself, she can. If he was slightly bigger or injured and we need to do it together, we do like we did before. We stand side by side. She gets her arms in position I do on the count of three. Then we lower them together. So 
He's taking her, taking her up with her arm underneath his chest. Yes. Diagonal across like this. Yeah. Okay. It's to get him a lot of body support okay. and contact. If she was concerned about a head flip, why would you do that <coughs> way do the supreme head hold on him? She does that, and I call this, a, this is actually a full supreme head hold with the headlock, but so that way he can't turn him by. But let's just say if she was lifting him off the table, she may keep it to just this. Mm -hmm. So now as she comes away, that she may even go this. <laughs> I feel more secure That's with fine. this. Yeah, if, if I'm scared that the dog's gonna. Now rip, this rip is in the low stress handling book. This is very technique specific, meaning her hand is right up behind the base of the ear, so it is not putting pressure on the trachea. Yeah. If you right, the old traditional head hold. Why don't you flip your arm that way? If she wanted to get higher on the neck, what happens is her forearm traverses the trachea and it's actually cutting it off, and that's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. When she has her arm flipped the other way, it stays more in a V. So she's not cutting across here, so it's, there's less discomfort. She's still in safety. And the hand placement is really that point that limits the head from being able to flip. That's how it gives the safety. And, and uh, what, I, what I really like about Dr. Yan's book is she shows when people don't do the placement correctly and the dog is flipping and, uh, and almost nailing her. And then when you get it correct, how no, the head won't turn, but the animal is eating treats. So they can swallow and they're comfortable. Okay. Very good. Well, why don't we do your little doxies? Because the little ones can really be a challenge. I'm sorry. So um, I know there were a couple of texts here that we talked about. Let's make sure I, we show you positioning and handling. Were there any kind of questions or concerns or situations where it's like, oh man, how are we going to do this? No? Okay. Huh? That's right, yours are all asleep. <laughs> you look Hello nervous, there. Dr. Miller. Well, everything okay? <laughs> Absolutely. We hope that she doesn't embarrass us today. <laughs> we hope so. She can't embarrass you. Life is all a learning thing. That's right. That's right. All right, well, thank you for sending her down here. And what we're going to do right, the first thing is you're going to get a couple nummies. I'm not handing them to her, I'm just doing this. Right? Good job. I just want to see, will she eat them off the table? And she does. Yay! Oh, and you like that? Very good. So, okay, well, we're going to get her checkup done. I know she's uh, due for her booster vaccination. <laughs> booster vaccination. Uh, and um, then we're going to talk a little bit about spay and neuter coming up tomorrow, right? Yes, it is. Okay, so we're going to get some pre anesthetic blood work done. And then uh, we can discuss uh, any other concerns you have about that. Fantastic. Okay, so I've done a little chit chat time. Now, she's already had some adaptal sprayed on her, so maybe that happened in the waiting room. And because she ate the food, I'm not, I don't think I need to apply another <coughs> you know, amount of it. If she was too scared and wasn't eating, then yes, I would. I would be like over here, squirt, squirt, and sneak it in on like that. Okay. Oh, we would also spray it on her jacket and on her forearms as well, so we're emitting it as well. Okay, so again, I would start from the side. Rachel, are we ready to go? I'm going to ask my handler. Because Ray, if Rachel is feeling any body tension, any kind of thing, you know, rising, she would either kind of give me the, there's a lot of nonverbal communication that would go on between me and my text, but like the, oh, or, yeah. Okay, so Rachel just gave me the, which means yeah. <laughs> so again, though, I would say, okay, here you go, buddy. Take one or two nuggets, and then I would take my stethoscope. I always start with auscultating the chest first. It's the least invasive part of the exam. I get small touch, and it, that way I can assess how are they for touch. Then after that, I would go, okay, you can have one more. There, can and now I'm going Pardon? Can you change sides so we can? Oh, yeah, sorry. These are nice and portable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so again, I would stand like this. I would not be coming from this. So I would stand to the side, and uh, hey, you. You can either, she may already be feeding, and then I would take my stethoscope and put it in and listen to a few, and then I would take it away. And when you take it away, what I'm watching for is if there's a D, any like, if there, there might have been fine and then a little rise to signs of fear. So when I take it away now, I'm looking to see, is there relaxation when I take it away? Because it's really better to work during an exam, like I touched you and you went up, now I released it and I'm going to let you go down. And then I touched you again and went up and I'm gonna release it and it goes down. So it's kind of like this little sine wave. Instead of keeping my hand on them and keeping the stethoscope on them and then still, then immediately reaching to touch for the hand or immediately reaching and touch for the abdomen. So, and even though it's only one second or two seconds of that no hands on them, 
it really makes a difference. It really is a benefit to like kind of de decrease, you know, that feeling of the stimulus on them. What? Okay, back. Okay. Rachel, you're doing. Hey, you. Yeah. So if, for example, probably you've got students know this one, you're by yourself and you've got to do treatment, <laughs> eh? So you listen, you're going to do two finger hook on the collar. And now if you're not a resource guarder, which you're not, you could, or even if it is a resource guarder, you're going to get good at just one or two nuggets and then you palpate the abdomen and then your hand off. And then just one or two nuggets, feel the pulse and then hand off. Oh, great. You're here. Could you hold this puppy? <laughs> sure. <laughs> That students and help each other at times. <laughs> right, Jane? Yeah. Anyway, but that's how, see, a resource guard, you know, a dog who's going to guard over food bowls or large objects, what you may find that happens is you get, um, let's say we put, I'm going to do a little targeting here. We got this all smeared up, and I lay it down, and then when we go to touch, the dog growls, goes to head flip, you're like, woo, we're a resource guarder. So in the vet office at the shelter, how do we now trade up and be safe? <coughs> so let's just pretend, sorry, let's pretend he's a resource guard. Do you want to set that down for a second? And I'm like, oh, we got to get you away. It's like, watch me, watch, watch me. And so as soon as I get him over here, she's going to pull that away and then I go, okay, no food puzzles laid around him. Now, if we do need to make, have this dog target, we may go more to something like a spoon where like with Cooper, you know, not Cooper, sorry, um, the little Yorkie puppy, I'm gonna do like targeting here, where I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna palpate the abdomen, you know, and then I'm gonna say, all right, go, lick, I palpate, hand off, and then she takes it away. She's in control of the resource. Now that reduces the aggression the dog has over biting. So if it's like, how come he wanted to eat me alive when the food puzzle was on the floor, but now he's behaving so well, when my tech is holding the food object and like on and off, it's because the dog understands she's in control. There's the resource, not him, but she's not confronting him or challenging about it. Also, when it's only one or two nuggets at a time, the resource has been consumed. There's nothing left to fight over. So that's how in that moment, especially in the vet exam and at the shelter, because this may be why that dog is there. He just bit the eyeball out of the chihuahua in the home or the food dish, had that happen. And so he got kicked out because he's the aggressor at the shelter. But you're not going to get that history from somebody. You think they're going to tell you that? No, because you won't get adopted. Okay. So then, of course, with you, hi. We're going to go ahead and I may, again, do one quick little that as I flip the ear. Very good. I know you got to chew. <laughs> there. Now I'm going to flip the ear. Hand off. Hand off. Right? So the dog and puppy is really learning. Not only each touch, but the timing of it. And yes, you're going to get skillful at quickly looking. Because this, for hours, <laughs> can be very stress-inducing. Or what if I hit the jackpot on a really inflamed ear that's painful? I don't want to be hanging on to it for a long time. What I do want to do is get my lidocaine cream and stealthily, or my tech can even do this, give a quick bit of reward and then wipe the cream in and then wait five minutes so that the pain is reduced. So then you can go on and do your exam. Okay. So then we would do like, hi, do your mouth exam the same way? Okay, reward, flip the lip, get a little reward. Hi there. Hold the head up, look in your eyes, get a little, opening the mouth safe for the last. That's more, it's kind of invasive, you know? And so you gotta prep them up to that, plus assess how, how much are they accepting this head handling so that A, you're safe, you don't get bitten, and B, we don't push them up to biting us as a way to stop head handling an exam. Okay, yeah. And then hi. And I always roll your little lips over the teeth. Good baby, there you go. Okay. And then we change sides and I do the other side. Now these guys are a little tricky to position, aren't they? Because they're so neat on them. Um, so let's pretend we're going to take an x ray on him. <laughs> Very good. Because I think, I mean, boy, when I did that bite near bite job stress survey, like almost all the positioning bites or near bites were for ultrasound and x ray. All right. So we can have our blob of thing. <coughs> Rachel is going to be there. Now, yes, okay, Illinois state law requires us to go through our sexual harassment training. And to be very clear, yeah, they do. 
And to be very clear that in this job from time to time, I may stand next to you and my body may touch you. And there's nothing more than the security of this animal and their welfare. And that is why my body is touching you. Because if I didn't tell her that by law and she says, Dr. Foote's trying to make a move on me. <laughs> yeah, guess what? I'm in deep trouble. Okay, so That's I'm still, funny. yeah. <laughs> I'm still reaching under my, you can't see it, but my hand is right here on the hock. And my other hand is here, is kind of supporting it on the count of three. And she has her hand here, right behind the head. She's not holding around the throat, but this is to just help prevent the head flip. That's when the bite can happen. Now let's say this puppy was already acting a little scared, but we gotta get your x-ray done, buddy. You got kicked in the head by that horse or hit in the head with that softball. This is how we can hood said puppy. It's kind of tucked it underneath there. So on the one, two, three, now we can flip. There you go. Oh, sweetness, it's okay. I know. It's okay. There. Baby. I know. Hold on. Now this is where we're going to get one Mississippi, two it's Mississippi, okay. three Mississippi, the three, three seconds to limit for handling, and now the puppy has relaxed. If the puppy continued to struggle, we would allow the puppy to sit up, and then we say, okay, we're going to have to practice positioning and slower amount, you know, at home. And I might give that puppy, if it's, we gotta get this x-ray done today, I might give him just a little bit of dextomator so that he's calm and relaxed, we get the x-ray done, he doesn't have the anxiety and he doesn't have the pain. And then later, if everything's okay, I'm gonna have the client at home practice, let's just roll him on his side, just practice this at home and he's eating dinner while we're practicing positioning. Because there may be another time in this puppy's life, this especially dachshund, who may need a back x-ray, right? Right. Okay. Very good. So that was quick hooding so that the puppy's like, whoa, it's happening here. And secondly, it's also a protective device so we don't get bitten. And then what could we spray on our little towel to make life better for a dog? Yay! Okay, good. All right, so um, I guess another thing, we'll just talk about blood draw. Okay. <laughs> I'm just thinking on, on these little tiny legs. So we were all taught this, weren't we? Okay. You're going to learn how to do it like this 45 degrees. And those of you who are doing clicker training, you know, in um, cooperative care, yes, it's nice. If the dog is really good for doing it from the front, yet also teach coming from the side and do cooperative care for tarsal vein. Because when they're in the vet office, it's so much more stressful. They may not be able to perform the task. And we're gonna get the blood work done. You know, we gotta buy a car. What if he's bleeding to death? Blah. Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm not upsetting you. So a couple other tips too, is she's gonna hold him. She could even like hold this or just keep him focused on that item, but I'm always going to come from the side. Uh, she can hold off the vein, and when I'm going to do this, I am not holding the paw. I may only just balance the paw this way. Bigger trigger to do this than to do this. And witch hazel, use witch hazel, don't use alcohol. Witch hazel is 40% alcohol, but it doesn't have the sting, and it doesn't have the smell, and it's anti-inflammatory and soothing. So you can wet it down. And then go ahead and take our blood. Let's say we could take our blood. Let's say he's like this, right? I'm like, oh, brother. He's small enough that we could do the same positioning for a jugular blood draw as we would on a cat. So you can use some of your, yes, I know you're looking at me stunned, but, <laughs> oh, good, not. Anyway, but we can use some of the same positioning techniques we use for the cats on the small dogs. It isn't that it's only for the cat. It's just like, how are we going to position the smaller body and frankly, it doesn't matter which vein we get blood out of, all we want is blood. So let's set him down here. So let's say he, I don't like my feet at all. This is horrible. How she was going to position him, just for the jugular, is pretend he's a cat. So she's got his butt against her abdomen. Both arms are coming here. You know, he may not be laying down. He could stay up if he doesn't lay down. Okay. And now see how she's positioned his head up? So I could, and this is important, I am not bending over him. I'm, do you see I'm still about 45 degrees? I could see, can see the jugular vein, and now I can go ahead and draw the blood this way. And if this is less struggle for him, write that down in the medical record. 
His blood draws are going to be done by jugular. We could work on counter conditioning with pause at home. Yes, yes, yes. But let's say he had been quicked when his nails were clipped when he was 12 and 14 weeks old and it was painful and it was a struggle getting his nails done. He may never really be able to learn very easily how to tolerate having his foot held for cephalic blood draw. So we're just gonna do a lot of avoidance of doing that unless we absolutely have to. And if we absolutely have to, then we're gonna give him some happy juice. We're gonna give him a little bit of a sedative drug to be able to get it down and get it in. Okay, all right. Do you guys have any other questions on low stress on puppies? Okay, so Besides really- just doing it, how do you get good at that sideways blood draw? It's practice. Besides just doing it. Okay. I think a lot of it is that, I say it, it's like, I feel really confident. I can do something when I see it in front of my face and it's all right there. But that's all about me. I've got to get in my head. It's about her. <coughs> what is experience like for you? You just saw Dr. Mello. She's pulling back away from me. <laughs> so now if I go, okay, I need, I need to see it. And I can, I can, or I just get quick it. I can see your face and I'm going to go away. And she stays more calm. I focus on that response and then I just learn a better skill. That's it. <laughs> You know, really, and get creative. Well, blood comes from anywhere. Anywhere else we can get it that's less stressful? Tarsal vein, yeah. Well, he's a little little guy. <laughs> but if he was better about me doing this and I feel the vein and I could draw it like this, we're fine, we're set. A 25 gauge butterfly, even if you have to three mils of blood. Do it all the time from cats again, we could do that from him. <laughs> yeah. Um I usually tell my puppy owners to massage the dog's feet, massage the ears, wipe their fingers along the gums. Does that go along with all that? Yes, it does. And I would take it almost a little, but make sure they're giving a reward when they massage. Give her, so that you've got that element. Because what I've seen some people do is, well, I'm massaging his feet and he's pulling away, but they stay massaging, so actually he's learning to withdraw about it. So just add to make sure. And then you give a nugget of food afterward and make it meal, not mm -hmm. so much just treats. Okay. So yes, that is good to do. We want to do that. Yeah. All right. Well, that was a big afternoon for you. Okay. Well, we could take another break and then I'll do the last presentation and question and answers and everything. Okay. Any other Pardon? Any other yeah.